most of your indoor and outdoor space. So he hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining us. And thank you JD Communications and Boston Design Week for hosting this panel. My name is Jenna Talbot and I'm the editor in chief of New England Home Magazine. And I'm on my porch. And if you were here early, you, could, you saw me talking about my pumpkins and my flowers and I'm ready to stay out. I'm gonna stay out all season and into winter, see if I can do it. Um, joining me today uh, are, is Gabby Bove, the lead designer, uh, interior designer at Eleven Interiors. Hi, Gabby. Hi. Chris Brown, who's principal of B Architecture Studio. Hello. Sarah Lawson, owner of SNH Construction, and Greg Lombardi, founding principal of Gregory Lombardi Design. So we've we've had some nice chats leading up to this, and we I think we've got a really great uh, conversation um, in store for everybody today. And it's I just couldn't be a better all day. Happy October 1st. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Um, and so what, what we're talking about is making the most of our indoor and outdoor spaces. Um, and just because the temps dip into the 50s at sundown doesn't mean we have to shut our doors or walls to the night air. As we ease from one glorious New England season to the next, many of us do feel real sadness as the days shorten, uh, and can, but can comfort ourselves with the prospect of welcoming friends, to gather around the dinner table, game room, or kitchen island. So this year, given the pandemic, there are true safety concerns um, regarding indoor gatherings. And with that, many of us are bracing for the prospect of increased isolation. But today, perhaps we can challenge all of our ideas about what's seasonally appropriate. Do we have to close up the porch or terrace or nana wall as we head into fall? Our expert panelists, have contributed inspiring images of actual pre-pandemic New England spaces. And in sharing these, we hope to encourage you to perhaps reframe your mindset about getting or staying outdoors. And as my mom always says, there's no bad weather, only bad clothing. I think other people <laughs> And then the, the other added bonus is there aren't as many bugs, though I didn't get my mosquitoes this afternoon. So anyway, so everyone who's here, um, if you'd like to ask any questions as we go, um, please feel free to uh, raise your virtual hand via the button at the bottom of the screen. Um, I think that's enabled. Otherwise, you can chat into the Q&A or chat into the chat panel. I mean, we'll just try and keep up with, with everything if, if you have lots to say. Um, we're going to get started real quick. I just wanted to just share the basic format. We're gonna, we've divided these images into three parts. We're going to start with the outdoor spaces. Then we're going to move on to transitional spaces that are indoor and out. And then since it's just realistic to think that there will be storms and whether you don't want to go out and we're going to end with the indoors. So if we could have the first slide up. There it is. Okay, we're just going to get the full screen on. Okay. Um, hold on one second here. Okay. All right, we're starting with Gabby. So tell us a little bit about this outdoor living room. What yeah. about? Yeah, so we worked on this house. This was a new build house um, in South Dartmouth um, on the water. The client fell in love with the property and decided to build brand new. So we had the opportunity to blur the inside and the outside a lot with this house. Um, you can see some uh, nano walls, which are sliding glass walls up over to your right. On the other side of that wall is the living room. And this they dubbed the outdoor living room. They really wanted an informal space to um, just hang out and especially at sunset, which you can see right here how gorgeous it is. We have a fireplace over to the right hand side um, that's cladded with stone. On the other side of that is actually an indoor fireplace. So you have this really indoor outdoor transition here. Um, and what we love about this porch, the way we furnished it, is we have a lot of movable tables. You can see a couple of them here. The clients love to play games out here, have cocktails at sunset, um, and we really envision, you know, envision for them to be able to use this throughout the fall, and they definitely do. So they turn on that outdoor fireplace, it's gas, and they're able to use it um, for an extended period of time. And, and the other thing that's really nice about it is there's a, um, a roof kind of overhead. So it feels cozy and it feels somewhat enclosed at the same time. So as the temperature is lower, you know, you feel like you're kind of inside at the same time. Oh, I love it. That's really great. And that there's an indoor fireplace just on the other side of that too. 
Yeah, and you'll see more of this house as we go through too. So you can oh, excellent. Kind of follow Beautiful. Along. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hi, let me see the next slide, please. We've got, oh. <laughs> can you just advance it with the arrow button from that mode? We do have, we can talk about this all day though. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh no, <laughs> restart here. Hold on. IT, you want me to share my screen? I think I can do it now. Yes, please. Sorry about that. Okay, that's okay. Here, I'm just going to quick get up to slideshow. So Gabby, how many people lived in that house? So it's actually mainly for um, a husband and wife, and they have two grown children who come and visit, um, but they love to entertain. So they have a lot of parties here, and you'll see further along, you'll see that pool. They did a, a pool that's really meant to look like it's part of the ocean. Mm. It's, it's quite spectacular. It's that's really spectacular. Great. So gorgeous. I love it. That makes me want to retire and <laughs> get out of the house right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the front of the house is actually at the top. There's there's a hill here. So the front of the house, it's really unassuming. You don't really know what's going on. And yeah. as you move through, it gets, um, it reveals itself to you. It's really nice. Amazing. Yeah. Nice. Okay. I think we can everyone see that? Yeah. Panelists, I can only hear you. Okay. Excellent. All right, Greg, what can you tell us about this incredible fire pit? Well, what's interesting about this project, and I thought it was really relevant, is this is the like almost the two and a half projects in for the same client. It's a new build, uh, sort of envisioned from scratch uh, in Weston. And what I what I love about this is that they a lot about their lifestyle preferences about how they could enhance their experience of being on the property actually dovetails really well into what we're talking about now about how to increase the potentiality. So for example, the building in the back that you see, look, I might even try my little annotate button like back here. That's a, that's, he's a car collector. So he, he has a, a pavilion with an outdoor fireplace and a cooking area that's like a man cave sort of brings them out and other, their children are grown and they're starting to have grandchildren. So it's a center of gravity, different from the house. And there's even right here, there's a little tiny lap pole that's just meant to yeah. fit how they were living now to get them outside. They didn't want to commit to a big pool. So this was really tailored to how they see themselves living now and what the next chapter is. Um, I won't say they're older because they're my age, but they're, uh, you know, they're really engaged and they're really active with the family. And so the idea of having the fire pit much closer to the house where it was just a sort of a communal space. This is this terrace is like right off the main cocktail terrace off the back of the great room. So it really is an integral part of getting people outside. And it gives you a different vantage of looking long into the landscape without being, you know, sort of expanding the, the experiential centers of gravity, as I call it, like where you can move people around on a property. So it was a lot of fun to do. I love that. And I recognize now, um, we'll see that from the inside looking out from the, the spot in the, in the distance there. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Oopsie. Now, why can't I advance? There we go. Ooh, Chris, take Thanks. it away. Okay. Uh, so, you know, this project started like any other, you know, pre pandemic. And then we've actually worked with these clients and our builders and our landscapers uh, all during. So it's been uh, actually uh, a really enjoyable ride, especially in the early parts of the uh, pandemic where we had this great project to sink into and, and really think about the design and um, get away from you know some of the realities we were all dealing with. So we were really fortunate for that and appreciative of it. And in the background here, you can see just a massing study of their existing home and uh, it's a very quaint New England structure, but it's cozy. And as you're going to find with all of these projects that we're sharing is these spaces outdoors that we're all going to call rooms. I mean, this really expands their living space quite a bit, not only seasonally, but just the square footage of having outdoor pergolas and basically uh, a real dining room. The house is more of a, you know, part family room with a table off of a little mm -hmm. kitchen. Uh, here they can actually gather the whole family as uh, this couple, uh, they are about to be empty nesters soon. 
And the whole premise for this was that they love to hang out with everyone and each other and to have this pool space uh, was going to allow them and the kids really to come back. Uh, and then the incorporation of the pool house and these doors will slide open. So as we get into the season we're approaching now, you'll have a six foot opening and a screen and can still feel like you're outside and be able to look through the pergola and get the fire pit going. And when it gets even a little too chilly for that, they can go inside and watch the Patriots uh, on a screen and even work in a Murphy bed so that when the kids do come back, they can kind of crash there. So um, again, they're, the pool's in, this will get completed this winter and hopefully knock on wood, uh, they'll be really enjoying this come springtime next year. So I have to ask, and I know we've got Sarah's coming up next and you've also got a pool in that shot. How late can, are people keeping pools open? I mean, is it just as long as you want to spend the money on heating it or? Pretty what? much. That's, yeah. We're starting to see the extension of the shoulder season. Like I was just at a house yesterday and they're keeping the pool open to the first week of November, wow. which is, wow. and they don't mind paying to heat it because but they're, they have kids and they feel that they're trapped in the house, so they don't mind extending on either side. <laughs> Whatever. Sanity. It's a sanity check. <laughs> it's, um, it's all, I mean, also, pools get better the colder it gets outside. If you got a, oh, heat, totally. you a heated pool. So this pool is heated. This is a project in Cambridge. Um, what's interesting about this, actually, Greg was the designer of this, so I'm talking about it like it's my project. We <laughs> built it. <laughs> As we carefully designed this with great consideration. <laughs> um, Greg, please. Um, but this is, uh, this has a cover on it and it is, it is heated. And um, I mean, my understanding, and I do feel actually, why am I talking about this slide, Greg? Talk about the, 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 your part of it, Sarah. That's okay, our part of it. Well, how I, this thing was, they had kids who were young and who were going to a school right nearby and they were in the deepest, you know, uh, part it's off Brattle Street so they're in Cambridge but they wanted their house to be the place where the kids came you know and if you have a pool out in the suburbs it's not necessarily a distinguishing characteristic but here it really was unique and it there are other pictures further on of the inside where this sort of connects to a whole sort of recreation area it also had a, um, a spa a heated spa over to the mm -hmm. left here and so it was just a wonderful place for collecting the kids and I it did work out like that I mean, I'll throw in a little bit of a two cents here. This was the juxtaposition of the idea of the architecture, the interior, all the construction, everything moved towards an idea about this house had an old floor plan that was like a big old house where there was a back section where there was staff wing and it didn't engage the landscape at all. Mm -hmm. So what was fascinating about this, there used to be a garage where the swimming pool was and it killed the entire space. And the property line is right behind the fireplace. So there was no space. So the idea, what Chris said, this idea of creation, the creation of a room and the edges of the room. So the garage moved to the street. We activated the back wall of the garage and made it important by making an outdoor kitchen and entertaining the fireplace as the focal point and the pool. And it's all within view of the new kitchen area. So everything was sort of like a very modern idea of an out. It just doesn't have a roof on it. It's right. it tended yeah. to be a room. Um, so I just got a question. I don't know if everyone can see the question box on my screen. <laughs> but no. in any case, Linda Simonton asked a question. She said, do the gas outdoor fireplaces provide heat or just is it just ambience? No, absolutely. Yeah. They, they can be. And if you do bigger ones, they can actually give off so much heat that you, you almost can't sit near them. Yeah. Oh, sometimes you sweat sitting near them. So. They make you sweat. So you need to allow for designing backup space, like when you get hot. <laughs> oh, great. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. That was, oh, that's, that's my right. life in a true oh, landline, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, here. It's, you're on, by the way, Greg. <laughs> Tell them to call them back. <laughs> so, the beauty of having a landline. There you go. Um, so, uh, this house, which was interesting about this, they have, they have six children, and they're ages from college age down to like an early teenager and the house where the lawn is in the image there used to be a pool there that was sunken and it just wasn't it, the spaces were too chopped up so they felt like it was too confined against the house there wasn't enough of an outdoor room so the pergola was an extension 
we pushed everything into the space and took the pool and moved it stage right. It's where you can see some chairs in the background. And so we created like a lawn area for play adjacent to where people eat. There's heat lamps in this space so that they, they can do the shoulder seasons. It's out in Nantucket. So it was a fairly new house, but it was, um, again, they retooled it to how they wanted to live in the house, which they understood they had these kids that needed a place to go without everyone being on top of each other in one spot. So we, again, moved these spaces out. There's actually behind the swimming pool, there's actually an in-ground trampoline that's a pretty good size, which oh my I was incredulous. I didn't think they'd actually use it. There's someone on it. Anytime I've been there, there's some kid doing flips and <laughs> entertaining independently over there. So it's kind of a cool thing. Looks like we just had a question um, on backing up about the stone. Whoopsie, how do I go back? There we go. How, what's the stone on this one, uh, Greg and Sarah, on the, the herringbone pattern? Is that what we're seeing in the back? It's, it, yeah, it's actually, there's, um, there's blue stone in the more organic, irregular pattern, and there's blue stone in the herringbone pattern. And then the pool surround, because it's a little bit more durable, is a granite that has like a warm uh, sort of chocolatey tan color. So mm -hmm. we were going with this, I want to say more Victorian, you know, not being afraid of color, um, the greens and the reds and some of the saturation and not afraid of patterns. So we mixed it up and made it like a carpet in the room. Um, and they actually have more furniture now on that space. Oh, yeah, nice. Okay, um, there was, oh, we've got people like this pergola and heat lamp uh, idea. <laughs> Show me with the little pointer. Where's that trampoline you just mentioned? On this, yeah, it's not on the picture. Yeah, you won't see it, um, but it's, okay. there's this little building in the back. We uh -huh. made it as like, it's a, the uh, She Shed Art Studio. So Fun. that's like a garden and right in front of it is um, like there's a hanging chair, there's a garden, there's a craft area and that's where the, the trampoline is. So we sort of pushed it into an unused part of the property like and made this other building. They really don't have, a, they have a garage but it's used for more maintenance things. So they needed a space that felt outside and rather than putting kids in the basement um, it was the wife's idea, like, why don't we make this other space? So we netted it into the, the overall plan. Excellent. How many buildings is that total? Um, there is the main house, two, and then a freestanding the garage that's a little further to the left down property. Right, a compound. Okay, so I think compound. now we're headed into our next segment, the transitional spaces, if I figure out how to advance. There we go, okay. So Gabby, yeah. So this, this is gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. So this is the same house we talked about earlier. Behind me is that outdoor living room. So I'm standing entering the living room. It's to my right. And as you can see, the doors are pushed all the way open. Um, so you can really walk right onto this beautiful lawn. And then next to that is the swimming pool. Um, and you can see in the distance here, we have these picnic tables. There's uh, two that are pushed together that can be moved around. Um, and then right in front of you, you have a 14 person dining room table. Um, like I said, this couple loves to entertain. So they wanted to make sure that you can fit 14 without having to have an extendable part. Um, so yeah, really, you know, indoor, outdoor living for sure. So that makes me think if all uh, parties were comfortable with it, if you could potentially do Thanksgiving with these walls thrown wide open. So yeah. An outdoor space. Yeah. I mean, I think what was nice about this is you can have, you know, cocktails or you can have appetizers maybe outside, start in the outdoor living room, start, you know, at the picnic tables and as the sun goes down, you know, leave the doors open, come on in here, you know, have a meal at the table, maybe having different stations would be nice. Mm -hmm. um, we really paid attention here with different lighting levels inside and outside to create hubs. So because they love to entertain so much, we have ambient lighting up above. Um, we have, you know, lamp lighting and we also have these beautiful um, pendants here. They actually are in, engraved with um, this pattern and when they're on, it looks like waves. So they kind of, it kind of creates this really beautiful glow. I just want to jump in and say one thing. What, what Gabby's showing here is something that all clients are asking for now. They want no lip between inside and outside. They want to be able to step out at one level they don't want to have any separation between inside and outside space. And there's a little bit of a, you know, Chris could probably speak to about the 
to build no, we don't like doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and is it something that's new um, in New England? I mean, it's, 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 people are getting the idea, even though they might only be able to use it during the warm months, or as we're advocating here, use it as much as you can. Is it is it a newer trend? Or has it been on this, is this what people have been asking for? I think you just said, Greg, they're asking for it more. Well, my, you know, I, I probably shouldn't say it, but I've used the term house pornography before because <laughs> people, people see stuff in magazines and now in Pinterest and they start to covet that which they do not have at home. So the right. idea of throwing open walls, like I, I have people showing me images and I say, that's New Zealand, that's California, <laughs> it's not here. But they want that that idea of like just break down the barriers, and a lot of houses in New England weren't set up that way. They're right. Yeah, we've had right. that we've had that same request um, plenty of times as well, and we've been doing a lot of you know studies of how materials are meeting and what that threshold is to make it work for New England. Because like you said, a lot of these homes are in California that are online. So. Yes, as usual, I'm the voice of doom. Lots of <laughs> lots of le lots of leaking comes from that. <laughs> so. Yeah. Just saying, it's so, technically challenging. Yeah, but it can be done. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, if you want to explore, and, and we've done this with clients too, and there's, there's probably some examples here, you know, if you can create enough of an overhang, so you either have kind of that solid pergola and give yourself some defense of the snow that's gonna come and not have it all completely blown up against those doors, Right. Uh, you know, maybe we can start to think about that. And then we also start to think about the, the decking and what actually will meet that threshold so that, you know, maybe there's a way to get narrower deck boards so that ice and water just finds its way through vertically down before it starts going horizontal into the home. So there, there's some tricks we can play and it helps if we're facing the right orientation, like south, so it will not just stay there over time on the north side so uh but again just like greg is saying you know pinterest can pull an image from anywhere in the world and if it's in that warmer climate it, hey. it may or may not be the best fit for here but now, if, the door, if the door is installed correctly too i mean it's it's just the way you pan them they're meant to drain so there are ways mm -hmm. Wow, I love these this panel of experts. You guys are talking around all the issues. Well, where is this, Greg? This is this can't be New England. I was gonna say perfect segue. I didn't even know that slide was coming. So it's like it, if ever there was a site that that exemplifies this, this is a new construction that we worked on down in South Dartmouth. And it's on the water, it's full throttle. I mean, it's it's literally feet from you know the edge of the beach and the drop and the waves and the, I mean, it was a brutal location, but they wanted this idea of inside outside. So, I mean, it's fantastic. The accordion, everything just opens up. We kept it pretty simple out there. It's a big, heavy seating group that doesn't blow away. Uh, so everything, you have to think about cushions getting loose and things happening. And there's a giant fire boulder. That, it's actually a big block, of, um, it's natural stone with a divot carved out of the top where the fire comes out of it. So it's a one organic piece, which sort of fit their sensibility about, again, trying to not make it overproduced. It's already, you know, it's pretty slick for a, I want to say a summer house on the coast, but it was very uh, specific. You know, they like this contemporary, very pale and minimal and open. And the, the doors were, that was the big move on the back. And the house is actually pretty traditional on the outside. Um, oh, huh. Fire boulder, is that a technical term? Like that? <laughs> Can yeah, I, order yeah. <laughs> I love we, that. We know we've, we've done them where, uh, they're, some of them are commercially available now, but they're, uh, they're natural stones that are they're carved out. And then we size an emitter, and that can get into the size of the heating element. But uh, the house with a trampoline actually has a really long one that doubles as a table and a stool, and there's fire on one end of it. So it just looks like this big organic whale shape that's coming out of the ground, but it it doesn't become as um, you know the hard edges of it. It kind of blends a little better. But, wow. uh, yeah. I love, I love it. Okay. Oh, it's right into another. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you got the floor. I got the floor <laughs> inside outside. This one was a. Uh, this was you know more thinking about how we were activating a space that. Uh, the big ledge to the left, 
The house is up on top of the ledge, about 25 feet up there, and they had no room to put a swimming pool. And they had, they have three children that are like college age down and super athletic. They're always doing something. So how do they want to annex this other part of the site that really wasn't usable? And this is something that's coming up now a lot with COVID is like people are looking really critically yeah. at the spaces and saying, this doesn't work for me. What does this do? I, I have this space. So we thought this was kind of an interesting, you know, I proposed building the pool and sort of juxtaposing it against the ledge as an element. And then they, because it's so far from the house, it created another destination with the building. And then because it's purely seasonal, being able to throw it open um, is how they love this inside outside thing. So their kids can be teenage parties down here away from the house. And then there's below the railing, another 12 or 15 feet down, there's a play lawn for soccer and everything. So we basically terraced into what was a big bank with a ledge in it. Um, so it was, a, it was a fun project to do. It's up on the North, uh, North Shore in Manchester. Oh, it's a yeah. gorgeous photo too. Yeah. Love the interior ceiling, it's gorgeous. Oh, yeah, I started in the I, I do have a question. Uh, maybe Chris, you can uh, address this as you talk. Um, and this is one I wonder too, um, what is, what's everyone's feelings about screens? Are screens too practical? Are, in some of these spaces where the walls open right up, are people just kind of like, whatever, you know, we don't need any sort of screened in feature there, just. No, we need screens. It's yeah. Probably, <laughs> especially, you know, if you're, you, you know, if you're on the Cape, if you're North Shore, anywhere, um, mm. maybe, maybe Rome, you can still be without screens, but. Uh, here, it's when we start th considering those these big openings, when we're getting more than six feet, we have to get clever and start talking to our yeah. window and door reps on how we're going to screen this. Uh, we need to know what the age of the children are and also the, the pets, the dogs, uh, to make sure that once we've probably put in a more complicated screen system that it just doesn't get off the rails, you know, brushed into. So. There's a lot of great systems out there and just, we just do our best to stay on top of everything that can be done and they can also be automated. But uh, yeah, so part of it too is, the, so this one, in this image here, it's pretty simple. It's an outswinging French door and there are sliding tracks for the screen. And yeah, you can, you don't have to be so mindful that if you're cooking for a half hour and a couple of flies may get in, that, that may or may not be okay. Uh, if you're going to finally sit down to eat either outside or inside, yeah, close the screen because something's going to come in or even a squirrel. Um, so you, you got to be mindful of that too. Um, but anyway, one, when we get to larger openings, we also then look to say, okay, is there a place for a simple passage door? Because if we, you know, do you really want to move a six, nine foot, 10 foot screen if you're just bringing out a beer to sit out on the patio and pull it back. So there's a bunch of flow questions that we go through with our clients just to see how they're gonna use it. Are they carrying trays and just food and your guests are over and they're doing the same thing. You don't want them caught up in the screen. And next thing you know, your guest is rolled up in it. Um, I haven't seen that happen. Maybe some of the panel has, but anyway, that's, you know, we're always trying to figure that out. Um, I, I wouldn't even think of that if you're going in and out. Yeah, like how what, or, what passageway is important. Or I've actually, I'll, I will confess, they're so good now at being transparent. Oh, you I might out. have walked oh, into yeah. one and pulled it off the hinges maybe you know, once, I, twice. They've gotten yeah. really nice, yeah. But, you know, the, See, the pets, the dogs, they, my, my puppy included, um, <laughs> I think oh. she just saw a couple of stars one day because she thought the door was open. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. She's, she's fine. <laughs> is this the same project, Chris? Yes. No, yeah. this is. This is the same view. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and so you can see what we're talking about. That little pull there, that screen will come, and then the other one will come this way, and then you'll be good. Obviously, we're going to put those away when we want our pretty pictures. Well, here's a uh, great question that just came in that um, you could all address. How do you manage humidity in these spaces and the effect on like indoor stuff, furnishings, if the large doors are always open? Or I guess even if, you, if it's, a, it's a beach house. So I, I think that the important thing is, is especially keeping in mind how often, you know, you really are gonna keep these open. If you are, I think making sure, especially for fabrics that, you know, indoor outdoor has gotten so much better these days in terms of offerings. Um, we see so many fabrics that are 
all indoor outdoor polypropylene. So I think that that's um, one big factor for furnishing specifically um, in terms of you know woods and other things like that. You want to make sure you're careful about you know using natural materials and if they're going to expand or contract. So I think it's just being really cognizant of what materials you're choosing inside, right around where all these doors are being opened. Um, I saw someone else. I saw another thing about energy loss of yeah. AC or heat. Yeah. Or wood floors. That, that was a follow up to that. Sarah, yeah. do you have anything to? Well, I'll throw in something that I found in my personal experience, but it's such a great idea to throw it open. But you know, in a summer house, especially if you've been running the air conditioning and all of your surfaces are cooler temperature and mm -hmm. you throw this open for the party, the moisture, it's like the condensate on a glass, you will get moisture on the floor, on the finishes, on the counters, this layer of moisture until the house sort of recalibrates around that influx. It like attracts moisture from outside. And uh, it actually can be an inhibiting thing because people are less, unless you're ready for it, when you throw everything open and then all this damp air moves into the house and starts to condense on surfaces. So it's, it's noticeable. It can be, very, mm -hmm. depending on the day and the humidity, can be noticeable. I think it, my Yankee roots are showing, but I really feel like if a, for a summer house, I mean, we have a house in Plymouth that's on a dirt road kind of thing. And actually the way it handles the floor expansion and contraction is that it's there, it's old enough, they're wide boards, but there's gaps between them, right? <laughs> they just, where, where all the dirt from a million years is there. That's how you do it. That's my expansion joint, <laughs> the dirt from a hundred years. But, um, but just get letting, I mean, I feel like, this is a discussion I have with my husband all the time. You know, I love central air, trust me, but down there, I like mm -hmm. to just, to the maximum degree possible, let the outside in. And even the flies, I, I will let them in. I, I go after them once I shut the door. <laughs> yeah. but anyway, it's it's a tennis racket. It's yeah. not yeah. shark I see in the background, Sarah. Yeah. It's the design build opinion. It's just yeah. part of the beauty of a summer house is that feeling those those summer breezes on your outside at, and all, yeah, all possible. Well, uh, there's another great question from our, our friends over at Hickox Williams. Um, and I think it applies here. Uh, so what, and maybe Chris, you could take it. Um, what are our feelings about outswing French doors versus inswing French doors? Yeah, it's a pretty uh, popular topic. Uh, if we have a design preference, we try to swing them in residentially. Uh, I think, and, and Sarah, you can probably speak to this just as well, if not better than, than I can. Uh, it just provides a little bit of a better seal. Uh, and I think the screens might work a little easier. Uh, with this image that we're seeing right here, and again, this balcony really having you feel like you are almost in the water, just hovering right above it. Uh, with these French doors, because we still have folks that want that really charming door, and they actually love the procession of opening them. On these coastal locations, we also have to batten the hatch down, right? So there are uh, little chrome, looks like, hooks that you would see on a boat that are actually hooking both of these doors in in the open position. There's use of magnets that you can do too, but uh, you know, we took great care in designing and building uh, those built-ins and we want to preserve them. So in these locations, once you make those big openings, know what might blow around a little bit, especially the doors, or might slam and that will wake you up from your nap, which this is a perfect place to take one. So. We have uh, Justine Sterling just commented, you guys might be able to see this. She's um, originally from South Africa and she says, they never use screens there. And her deck has double doors and no screen here in uh, Massachusetts and swinging out as they have a overhang. So. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we share that, yep. <laughs> she cracked the system. Oh, this is the outside of the, this, this home you were just talking about, Chris. And this is in Provincetown, correct? Correct, yep. Yeah, almost at the end. And, you know, this is kind of the great, push and pull in a design process of making and trying to gain any type of extra space that we can per the zoning regulations. Uh, you know, this neighbor uh, to our, our left here is literally within my wingspan, about six feet away. And what we could do was, you know, by quote, giving up some space, which actually carved out this balcony. I was just talking about this project earlier. This is our favorite. Uh, we were able to gain extra space in our living room and still allow enough for this kind of semicircular deck. And it's, this image is becoming places of like repose and circulation and flow and everything all of us are thinking about for, for any project. But when it becomes so condensed, 
it, it really, you know, one wrong move and now your dinner party is being interrupted by, you know, kids just trying to come and go or something. And so here clients can get, our clients, the homeowners can get away. Uh, for them, they actually can get away twice. They have most of the front, front half water side of the second floor. And then the, the real party can happen here. And these amazing cooks, uh, these ladies can come in and out this way. And also friends and family can come from the living room here. So uh, really just trying to make every little piece of uh, the home fit the site here, uh, down to this little mini balcony here over in the dining room. So again, these French doors can open, they can swing in and stay open. And you can actually just get yourself that extra foot out to kind of feel mm -hmm. the breeze more and just feel like you're, you really have that connection uh, to the beach and the water. Oh, that's so nice. So nice. Beautiful. All right. Oh, okay. So speaking of screens, I think these next yeah. two pages, Gabby, are yeah. so porches. Yeah. Let's yeah. So this is actually the same house that we've been, I've been talking about. So this is on the other side. So talk about maximizing the property. They wanted to have as many different seating areas as possible. Um, so this is really for their informal dinners that I think they almost, not all year round, but they really stretch it. They love sitting out here. You're protected to your point earlier, like there's no bugs coming in. They have a grill. I think you can kind of it's actually behind that post here. I'm not as good with my drawing tool as Chris is, but it's behind this post. Um, that there's a grill so you can cook out here and it's actually adjacent to the kitchen. So behind where I'd be standing would be the kitchen. You can come right out. And what's nice about this, like the warmth of the materials, it feels really natural. It feels really cozy all year long. Um, it's not unnatural to stay here through um, late fall and be protected from the wind because there is quite a bit of wind that's coming off in South Dartmouth. So, um, you know, this is strategically placed so that you're not getting a ton of glare or a ton of wind, which is really nice. Does it get closed up in the winter in any way? Like how, how is this winterized? It, it does. So there are actually shutters that you can't see that do come down and they do um, close this up. And that's actually along the entirety of the house. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. I don't know if the next one's the same project. Oh, this is a different project. This is, yeah, cool. this, so this is in Concord. Um, so this is really, a, this was a fun project. So this property is along, you can see a river in the back here. Um, so the clients own this whole property. They really wanted to expand their um, outdoor living. So to, but right behind me is the living room. And then right to the right of me is an outdoor patio and outdoor dining space. They use this space every day. Um, they read out here and these pieces of furniture um, move around a lot. They move them around a lot. So they're actually a little bit, they're not super heavy. Um, the husband likes to read in this chair, it swivels and face the river, and they do have dinner parties out here. And I actually attended one when the project was finished, they decided to cook for us. So we stayed out here and they moved the table um, to the middle of this space and kind of moved things around so we could be out there. Um, and in the winter, what's nice about this is they, these uh, screens go away and they're replaced by glass. So you don't get a full heated space, but what you also cannot see is that there is a uh, gas fireplace also in this space. So when you have the glass in and you have the gas fireplace on, it actually, like we were talking about before, it gets kind of hot in there. Um, so yeah, it's a really nice space and you can really use it, like you said, stretching into November. Gabby, Gabby, you make a really great point with these types of rooms where, you know, in a matter of five minutes, you could transform this into a completely different setting for the number of guests that are coming over. And it's really, really part of the fun of working with these type of spaces. So, you know, if it's two of them, they're nestled in and then if it's 12, uh, I could see that working so easily here. Yeah, yeah. And the, the glass is another great element too, you know, like I don't know how many people are doing this, but it was really important for them to be able to switch out the screens for the glass to extend um, mm -hmm. further. So the glass is somewhere else stored and it comes in and gets itself? Yes. Can yeah. you do that and to them? Or does that... Can they you do they don't room? personally, but I know um, my mother also has that in her screen porch and she and her husband do it themselves. It does take some time. It's not a five minute ordeal. It's a, you know, it's a day project, but it can happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, I think our next segment is blizzard proof. Mm -hmm. so clearly we're inside. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, this is definitely a wintery scene. Um, so yeah, this uh, this space, um, really large space that we had to work with. So what the client wanted, another um, couple with children who wanted to entertain and they wanted to create different seating vignettes. So in this space, um, being, you know, indoors, having that great fireplace, it is a, you know, wood burning fireplace. They wanted that to be the highlight of the space and they wanted to create different nodes. So what you can see in this photo is this very large custom ottoman that we had um, done in a uh, vinyl fabric um, that's meant to be like leather and that actually, you know, it moves around, it can become seating, you can put your feet up on it, you can have a tray like we have here for food, um, you can play games on it, so it's really versatile. Um, and then we have another seating node um, right towards the fireplace um, to have a cup of coffee, read the newspaper. And then to the left of the fireplace, we create another seating node on the edge of the room with a built-in reading nook that faces out to sprawling lawn um, on this property. So they really took advantage of the large space. And you know what was nice about it is um, the ability to create different seating arrangements for whatever you might be doing on that day if you're you know stuck inside. Right, you can get away from each other, but still. Yeah. Fire. In the same room, yeah, exactly. Oh, great. Okay, this is also for you. I love this room. I remember this room. I remember this project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this room, what was you know meant to be a respite from the kids a little bit. Um, it's a master bedroom, but there's also a lounge space in here, and that was purposefully done so that the parents that they have um, two twin girls, um, you know, they could have their own lounging space. So you can see that we built in this custom sofa into this nook here. A really great light comes in. We have ottomans that can be moved around if they did want to put their feet up. And then right to the left of the bed that you can't see, they have their own fireplace and TV. So it becomes their media room, a place for them to you know, work on their laptops and then also for them to sleep. So they you know, really can do a lot without having to leave the bedroom, which is nice. I love it. All my clothes would be piled up on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks Everyone like before, <laughs> and that's what it's going to look like after that shoot. Exactly. <laughs> right. <Hold the> <laughs> right. No, they're really good. They keep it like this all the time. Uh, good. <laughs> yeah. And then this space, uh, it's totally different from the last one. We actually, Sarah Lawson um, worked on this S N H built. Um, I think is this part of the addition? Um, so. This, that was an interior renovation and they made this really easy for us because it's gorgeous and we furnished it um, for the kids. So this space, you know, why have the space for your kids all in the middle of the house? This is really their own respite. They have a little lounge area. Um, that back part that you see is actually quite large. Um, so they can store all their toys and their books there. And, you know, we have a bit of fun with this reading nook made out of a swing. Um, so, you know, it's a room for the kids to just be. They have their play dates. They can have friends in this room and kind of it be closed off from the rest of the house, um, which was important. It's like a little house inside the house. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a little exactly. place. And maybe it's a workspace now, but my daughter would love that chair as such mm. as for the swing. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh. Really fun. Oh, okay. So this, I want to hear about this basement renovation. This is okay, a big so, right? So hmm. this project, this is in Belmont, and this project started, it was going to be just a first floor renovation. And then before we started, the house burned down. And I would like to emphasize before we started, oh, nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so they got the chance, and this was before uh, COVID. So it was just, they, they have one sort of young teen boy and they were able to completely rethink how they were going to do this and this is the basement so the way they situated the house was such that as you can see natural light comes in here it's a a radiant floor there's a music room in there and i was just there the other day actually and they use it all the time they sort of live down there which is interesting because there's a beautiful living room too um but this is really and i, I think there's one coming to where we dug down this one was you know we were pretty much starting from scratch but people are really going it just sounds worse than it is because wait to see the pictures they're going into the basement it's there's mm -hmm. a huge amount of activity um, in basement that we're seeing 
Can I just ask about the wood panels here? Is it is this what's what's happening here? Is this decorative or is it? Yeah, it's and it's re, it's a reclaimed river wood. It's the stuff that they find down in a low oxygen environment and it's preserved and they bring them up and mill them and they're really beautiful. They have that behind the headboard of the bed too in the in, in I the, love the look. Own, in the owner suite. Yeah, yeah. that's really I love pretty. The concrete. Yeah, the concrete. I was gonna say that the stain or I don't know if it's stained, but I love the look of the concrete okay. floor down there. Really chic. It's cool. And now I think I've got I have one more picture of it. And it's this incredible. I love this bath. Yes, I mean you can see that bathroom in the background in the other picture. So um, yeah, this is just part of the suite that they have down there. Oh, that's really nice. Did you say so? You did dig down for this. We dug down a little, but it wasn't. So what the one that you're going to see further is where you know we took the basement down four four feet. It's just we go into an existing basement and we go down. Uh, let me think about this. Well, this one, sorry, this next one where you were. This is all. This is the inside of the job that Greg and I were talking about, mm -hmm. where there's the pool in the back, and this uh, part connects through a doorway, as as Greg described. This is the basement. Um, connects to the backyard and this also has a screening room and actually another game room and a gym and um, the idea of this was again to sort of uh, collect the children there as opposed to other places but one thing they did do um, is they put an alarm on the door do you remember this Greg? <laughs> Because they don't know wanna, where they are at all times they, they <laughs> want to know if there's a kid if they're opening the door for kids to come in Oh, wow. so they, they and I thought, you know, genius, because that, you know, the school that they went to is actually the same school my kids went to. And, you know, you, you get a bunch of kids finding a place to go, you know, and it can turn to a rager. So they were trying to control, they wanted them there, but they wanted to keep them, no arrests, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so going to skip back to the other side. Oh, I didn't need to cut you off there. Do you want to say something else? No, about that's right. Go ahead. Um, we did have a question. Oops, hold on. That one's the fun one for last. Um, the floors. Justine Sterling asked, it, we just want to hear a little bit more about the flooring here. I think you said it was a poured concrete with radiant. What did you say that it was? It's poured concrete with radiant and it is, it's dye to make it those, those colors. Yeah. Okay. All right. I hope that answered Justine's question. She'll let us know if she wants to know more. And now I, I got to skip ahead to um, this crazy, uh, this crazy space. Yes, so this is a house in Cambridge that um, where we didn't expand the footprint of the house. It was already a reasonably sized house, but the, the customers were from Iceland and they actually brought their own architect from Iceland. <laughs> and um, we dug down like crazy. So this is the basement and they had a whole, they had a, a screening room down there. And, and all kinds of entertainment. But they, of course, as you can see, were wine aficionados. And they, they, the, the whole trend of going, of digging down is, we see a huge increase in that. I'm sure you guys see it too. Part of the reason is because they're now zoning in, not only are, do they not discourage it, which they used to, they now encourage it. There are benefits in terms of how they calculate your um, floor area ratio mm -hmm. in Cambridge to use the space because they're trying to increase density. I mean, they wanna make more places for people to live because of, oh. of prices there. So footprint stayed the same, a whole entertainment area, high ceilings, really beautiful down below. Great, and I think I, it's, I don't know if it's the same project that I have. Is this the same or is this a different project? This is. That's the same project. Uh, okay. I think That's the same project. That's outside. It's as though we're standing outside the wine room now. I mean, um, you know, this is a, this is on the extreme end <laughs> of well, what we built in Cambridge. It's a viewing room, a wine viewing room. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And Sarah, I'm jumping in. Like, I know this house. Sarah, this house isn't modern on the outside, right? No, not modern on the outside. You come, you come in. I'd love to see what the, like, upstairs looks like. This is still in the basement, this room? Yes, and actually, wow. you know, they cleared out the quarries of, of some part of the country for this because there's stone everywhere, and it was, it's uh, upstairs, too, and I think that, and glass, a lot of the partitions are, are like the rail system. I shouldn't call it a rail system because it's, it's all glass, um, and so I think it just was a sense of, you know, they weren't married to the Cambridge sensibility architectural sensibility they just had their own thing but the outside kept you know the same footprint and the back is all stone too outside I don't know. yeah I love it. <laughs> ah. 
Well, this is great. So uh, this is the last of our slides, I believe, but we do have a, a great question. Oops, I want to go back because that's a fun slide to just end on. Or we could stop sharing. But in any case, um, we have a question. Oh, before I ask it, that one, Vani wants to know mm -hmm. how sound is managed with all these hard surfaces. I think that's a great question. They're sound deadening panels or are they just pulled from Iceland are soft spoken? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry that there, there isn't, there isn't, there are not sound panels there if I remember correctly. I don't think so. Well, the ceilings, no, it's not, it's not sound no. panels. Oh, it's funny because that space isn't that big. And so it's, it's, there are partitions and I don't remember it being loud, which of course makes no sense, but that's, that's my memory of it. And there wasn't any particular technology around the sound. Huh, interesting, they embrace, embrace the echo. Um, so let's see, there's a, someone's using their hand raising uh, feature. I'm not sure how to answer it, but <laughs> we have another question for the group. If anyone has any ideas about renovating an attic space, we've talked about basements. Can anyone think yeah, about it? Yeah, we, we do it all the time. Yeah. Um, so they, you know, when you create what I would assume be your, your third floor, right? It's always the question of, well, who's going up all those flights of stairs? Is it the kids or is it the, the parents? And it's kind of, it's probably a little more than 50-50, but it does give them just a quick moment of pause of, do you throw the kids up there or do you want to get away a little bit more and have a bit more privacy? So um, just like these basements, we just have to be mindful of what the zoning parameters are and how much we can build. Uh, we, we do quite a bit in, in Milton and they have a pretty intense formula for how much you can do up there, but uh, typically we've been uh, able to find a good amount of space to create master suites or create spaces that are for the kids and have a common playroom, uh, ensuite bathrooms. Uh, but I can also be bad news when I first approach people because attic floors aren't meant to be lived on. So structurally, we need to uh, resupport them. And then uh, roof loads uh, basically become completely different because we need mm -hmm. to structurally uh, enforce the, the main ridge of the house so that we can create dormers and then transition those loads uh, down to the rest of the building. So um, it provides a great deal of square footage and additional room for families to grow. But uh, they're fun projects, but we, we like the challenge of them. Huh. That's, I wouldn't even think of that. That's the floor itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, usually attic floors are maybe that tall, if you're lucky. Um, yeah. huh. Okay, so, so we have Laura who would like to ask a question. I think, Laura, you can just speak and we'll hear you. Is that going to work? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen this work before. Oh, I, uh, Nicole, we're not hearing anything. Is there anything I need to do? She's chatting me. Um, she could. <laughs> nope. Oh, oh, she needs to unmute. Manage your mute. Manage your mute. <laughs> we'll give her a second here. Um, guys, that was fantastic, um, and we do have just a few more minutes. If anyone else wants to ask us any questions, um, you can chat it. You can um, try um, raising your hand after we figure out, um, Laura, our guinea pig, how to do it. Um, <laughs> I think we answered a bunch as they came through, and it looks like you guys were watching the chat as well. Yeah. Um, I'm inspired. I love it. I, I For me, uh, my, my space, my living space expands hugely during the summer months and it's always really hard to go back inside um mm -hmm. so oh did i hear something <laughs> i don't think she's there <laughs> <laughs> oh we're sorry laura well does anyone have any last comments they want to make about oh oh i have it we have a little bonus round we're supposed yeah. to share our um our new um i don't have my notes so i can't remember what i called it pandemic uh rituals yeah What's yeah something? Your pandemic summer. Sarah, we'll start with you. Well, I, I actually, there was a great question. And what I thought of is that um, my husband and I got one of those, so as, as actually we just did this a couple of weeks ago, we got one of those solo um, outdoor stoves, which is a stainless steel mm -hmm. double walled stove that has a system for um, recombusting the smoke. So it's less smoky. Okay, this thing's about two feet mm -hmm. across. 
And um, we got it, and to, so we could be outside on the on the deck at our house in Plymouth later. And what I noticed about that is that we normally on a Friday night or something, we'll sit down and we'll have hors d'oeuvres and a cocktail together and we'll hang out and chat. But then we'll sort of, we'll go, he'll go read, I'll go watch a movie and we'll sort of disappear from each other. But what happened was, even though we're, it's cold and we're stuck outside and it's starting to be winter, we sat out there by the fire and talked for a couple of hours. Like it was actually the positive side of this negative was a whole new sort of way of communicating and place to be together. So the sunny side of being, you know, of, yeah, of winter outside. Solo show. Going that for, I mean, the rest of the season into winter, right? I, I'm planning on doing it all winter because as you as I agree with your mother, because it's it's all in the boots. So <laughs> those big snow boots. <laughs> Love it. Yep. No bad weather, just bad clothing. All right. Uh, Chris, how about you? Sure. So uh, you know, we're these are all these uh, silver linings, right, to the what mm -hmm. we're going through. And so, you know, my wife and I we were able to remotely and spend a bunch of time at our uh, our home in Vermont. And we had crafted out this small kind of little patio area that always worked well for cocktails and, you know, greeting our friends, you know, typical summer evenings, fall evenings. Uh, and then we needed a bit more space and to be able to see like, you know, we kept in touch with, you know, there's few of us so we could invite them over and be outside and try to have dinner. And so we were trying to see what we need to do with this really tiny backyard and we're in an association, so we don't have full control, but we could gain it. Uh, so we took a folding table and uh, tablecloths and everything else. And uh, Julie got a ton of candles and we just started moving the table around the backyard to see where we wanted to for next spring expand to. And so we kind of had this like little movable, not a movable feast, but a little movable dinner party of four uh, during the summer. Um, and it was kind of fun. And it was kind of like, you know, once we set it all up, it was like, well, this looks great. And now it gives us a little bit more of an idea of the outdoor furniture we want to try to get for there as well. So it's like these little temporary things that we're doing out of necessity uh, will lead to something, you know, a bit more fun even for next year. You'll be making a more informed decision because you've mm -hmm. tried it out. I love that. Yeah, it's even better right. than marking it out in blue tape. It was like, you know, yeah, it's you're actually here. <laughs> and seeing how the light changes too. I mean, I think that's so, so key um, as because it gets very dramatic at the end of this year. All right, yeah. Gabby, what about you? So my husband and I, we love to go out to restaurants. That was our big thing. We would love to try new places in Boston and losing that we, you know, we were rid of our Friday night date night. So um, a coworker of mine actually mentioned that she had done a virtual cocktail class with her husband. And so Chris and I um, did it one time and then it became a habit. So through Bully Boy Distillers, and I don't know if they're doing it anymore. I know they have like an outdoor garden, but what was really fun is it was like the entire week. So they send out the ingredient list on Monday. They send out the maceration or like any kind of pre-mixer that you have to do on Wednesday. So you got to make that in preparation. And then on Friday night, we used, I'm in my dining room now, but we use our dining room table as like our bar and we make the drinks and we would drink them during the class. And then Chris would usually make more. Um, but it was like a really, it was like a really fun ritual that was, you know, like our date night because we couldn't go out. And, and now we kind of like, you know, Chris is really a great bartender. I am not, I don't pretend to be, but it's a fun thing to make drinks at home and make it like a fun thing that we do. So Oh, I love it. And there's a, some great buildup too. If it starts on Monday. Great. Right. It was like a whole activity. It felt, it felt exciting because, you know, yeah. there wasn't a lot to be excited about. So it was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, Greg, we're going to talk about Pop-Tarts. <laughs> <laughs> How can I not talk about Pop-Tarts? It seems like <laughs> after all this lead in, and Chris is exploring space and someone's doing cocktail mixology and I'm going to some like 70s white trash thing. <laughs> but you know what? It was just funny because I wasn't leaving the house and my partner would go out and buy the food. And there was a commercial, I don't think I'm craving for some normalcy for my childhood. And, and I used to eat them after school sometimes and we never thought anything of it. They were just what you did, you had Pop-Tarts. And I said, why don't you give me some Pop-Tarts? And he looked at me like I had three heads. And I said, no, I'm serious, just try. And he said, that's disgusting. I'm not bringing them in the house and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So we bring him into the house and then it ended up, he's like, you know, they, with a cocktail at night, they're actually not so bad. And I said, well, yeah, that segues in. And then how it turned into this other part of COVID was um, we have a house in Provincetown. So 
it became a joke, we have the pop tarts and we would invite people to our fire pit in the backyard because we can socially distance and say, why don't you come over and we'll have pop tarts. And at first it was like shock and horror. And now we have to buy them in a big box size because people want to come over for cocktails, socially distanced and pop tarts. <laughs> oh so what kind of cocktail do you serve with pop tarts? Yeah. Good if you go back, I, I'll quote my sister who used to say when she was in college, it was a vodka shot with a pop tart chaser. But <laughs> We're kind of into like, they do great with brown liquor, especially mm. the cinnamon one. Like you do oh. that, you toast that up and have a Manhattan. And it's like, oh, now you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> Home run, right? That's inspiring. I'm, I'm you think inspired. you can roast it in the winter, like with some tongs? You could maybe uh, like give it a little brown. Right? They put them in the fire pit, like over the gas flame. Like what if we try to s'mores it? What if That's we- what Yeah, like with the plant, yeah. And the debate about frosting or no frosting was like a big thing, but it, it really was like everyone was looking for a comfort food thing. It was weirdly a touchstone of, of a lot of people's childhood from the 70s. Like, oh, like and, I remember them from camping. It was always yeah. a big <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much. Um, it's five o'clock exactly. Uh, th that was um, a fantastic chat with all of you. And thanks everyone for joining us. We were holding steady at over 50 participants the entire, entire time. There's 43 of you still there. So thanks everybody. <laughs> and, thank uh, you. and thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Jenna. Thanks, Jenna. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.